Hi. Let me just get this up and go. Are you broadcasting video? Yes. Are you naked? <laughs> awesome. We just go live in the Facebook group. Yay! <laughs> I knew that would come in handy someday. It's handy. It's my video cover. Oh no, I'm sorry, that sucks. It's a consultant bad vibe thing. Oh, I bet. Oh my gosh. Hi guys, hi guys. Sorry that took a minute. A little surprise, a little surprise visit from my husband. Yay, it's time for Ask Away with Coach MK, my favorite part of the week. Happy Easter if you celebrate. Sorry, I uh, totally forgot that was happening tonight. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, which is, no, that's not true. I didn't forget. I was well aware it was Easter. Um, I just forgot that people do things for Easter that involve dinner. So I didn't think to move this uh, or tell anyone ahead of time. So I don't have that many questions anyway. So I thought, let's just get right to it. Go through it. Say hi to anyone who's here. Answer these questions. And then we can all go play and enjoy it. Get back to uh, a regular scheduled Sunday night. So we pull it up. I'm going to start with a question from the unicorns who are doing three days at the fair, who only have four weeks left in their training cycle. I'm sure freaking out just a little bit. Not too much, maybe just a little bit. It's got to be exciting. Yay! So, um, Coach, tell me a little bit about race day strategy. Do I need to have a walking strategy? Does it matter if I walk? Does it matter how often that I walk? What do I do? Okay, you guys are not doing a traditional 50 miler. A traditional 50 miler, what most people think of, is on a trail. It's not on a road. It's not in an uh, urban setting. It's not really held, it's held in a location you would probably love to see, um, but probably could not get to your family to agree to go to. And that is what makes Three Days at the Fair so interesting and so special. It's none of those things. So, um, that's a roundabout way of saying that every ultra marathoner knows that walking is inevitable. It's not just in, and it's not just probable. It's inevitable. It's going to happen at some point during the race, either because um, uh, you know trail people are the best kind of crazy. They're going to have you climbing up things and going over single track switchbacks and sliding down scree. There will always be a portion of the race that needs uh, you to walk it slowly and carefully. Um, and that is not a failure. It's not a loss. It doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. It doesn't mean you know, you're categorically stupid. What it does mean is that you mentally, you need to be prepared for it. Physiologically, whether or not that needs to be part of your plan, I kind of don't care. Um, it goes back to what I've said all, all along about Hal Higdon. What he's done for the sport has been, you know, his value is immeasurable and his contribution is huge. Um, but do I need walk breaks? I would rather get everyone to the point where they can hold that one effort level constantly and steadily without needing to pre-plan walk breaks. I would prefer to train you to listen to your body and tune into all the cues that you're getting without paying attention to uh, your watch to the point where, oh, okay, well, it's time to walk. Okay, it's time to run. Okay, well, okay, well, I really want you tuning into this instrument of yours and going with it for as well as possible for as long as possible. So if the, so if you, if you want to pre-program walk breaks, cool, do that. I'm not specifically going to prescribe them, recommend them or prohibit them because it really comes down to this. We don't know what's going to happen. It is a 24 hour race. Unlike every other ultra that you'll ever do, this is in one little location where it could be raining at the start and then sunny and humid at the finish. You just, and you can get off the course and back on the course. You can stop running, you can walk, you can swim, you can take a nap and then come back again. 
the options are and, and iterations are kind of limitless and endless. So with that in mind, I don't really care. You know, if you really want to program it, at the end of the day, if you don't trust your race plan, that is what's going to matter. And we'll talk through the race plan when we get a little closer, but it's going to involve listen to your body, and it's going to start and finish with the same way it always does when I do, have, uh, when I do race plans, is here's the effort line that you really don't need to cross too early in the race, and here is um, the pace line you really don't need to cross too early in the race. Like, I am never going to assign you, here is your magic number. Hold on to this magic number for the duration of the race because you're not a robot, yay! And your body literally doesn't work that way. I don't want you to feel awkward when you need to take walk breaks and I don't want you to feel like you failed or have messed up the plan and now we need a new plan um, as you go. Because again, it doesn't work that way. I want you confident enough in your training and your ability to roll with the punches as they are dealt that day. You have built hella fitness. You are incredibly strong. You're doing incredible things. Give yourself a little bit of credit for that. Give yourself a lot of credit for that, actually. And just don't worry so much about pre-prescribing everything because we can't predict the future. If, again, it makes you calmer and say, like, I just want to be prepared for walking a mile in hour six because I need to have a plan and I will not allow myself to deviate from it. Cool. But, like, that isn't really going to affect the outcome as much as you listening to your body, hitting a point where you're like, it's really humid and I feel gross. You know, I'm going to walk for a while. Because remember, we want to get 50 miles done, but you've got 24 hours in which to do it. The, I mean, that is a big, that should be a big load off. That's taking the time pressure off. So with no time pressure, walk when you need to walk, sleep when you need to sleep, grab an espresso from Beth Preddy when you need to do that, go take a nap or a shower when you want to and come back. There is no other ultra I have ever seen other than the one at Palmer Lake last weekend, but that will let you do this. There was a big, um, I want to say controversy, drama is the wrong word. Drama just sounds like such a shamey word, um, and, I, and I, don't, I don't like that. So controversy, I think is what it would be called. At mile like 92 of a 100 mile race, a dude was in a little bit of pain, and actually a whole lot of pain, and he was seen in a whole lot of pain, and someone handed him a bottle of water and he drank it. Now that's against the rules. That's taking help from your crew in between aid stations. That's an automatic disqualification. So the guy, even though he won, was disqualified, but, you know, and he was kind of okay with, I mean, he, at least he seemed okay with it at the time. He was like, you know what? I was tired, I was hot, I was delirious, and I did break a rule. So it is what it is. Very disappointing, but this is not that event, and you are not that guy. You can take water from anyone who gives it to you. You can take a beer from anyone who gives it to you. Don't start adding pressure and performance and parameters to a race that was always intended to be nothing but fun. And it's one that you're going to be strong enough to run really strongly for 24 hours. You're going to be able to do a whole lot without stopping. And if you do have to stop for a while, that's not because of your body and it's not because of a messed up race plan. It's because the plague hit, either in the form of humidity, sunshine, rain, or mosquitoes. Because you never know. You could get all three, all four in uh, New Jersey. So that is how I feel about race day strategy for an ultra, for this ultra. Coach MK, you streamed last week about race efforts and heart rates. Um, everything you said when it comes to your race, that makes a lot of sense. But what about training? Like the 30 minutes, the 30 minutes you assign us at 10K effort. Uh, do you want me to start slow and build or can I just get right to 170s? I don't really care. I care that the majority of the time in that band, you have 30 minutes to go harder than easy effort. I would prefer that you don't go any harder than 10K effort. Um, unless, until you've been doing this for a while and you know your body really well and you know your fitness level really well, it's hard to say, well, my pace at 170 is 914 or whatever. So you're gonna, I would rather you kind of take a look at what you did the last time and use that as a guideline, whatever the fastest number was in that time block. Don't exceed it too quickly, but don't necessarily aim for it. And listen to your body too. If you're tired and you just don't want to hit it hard that day, great. Don't go, you know, as long as you're harder than easy effort for 30 minutes, how hard you get doesn't really gonna, doesn't really impact the outcome very much. We're training for 50 fucking miles. We're training a lot. Your long run yesterday was like five hours and 45 minutes, followed by an hour and 45 minutes recovery run in the evening, if I remember correctly. Like, that is a lot of running in one day. When it comes to the 30 minutes on a Monday or a Wednesday, um, 
that is not going, those 40 or 30 minutes, I know you guys get really excited about stuff that's harder than easy effort because speed work and faster stuff and speed, speed, speed. Cool. Speed work does not categorically, or fa harder than easy efforts are, is not categorically speed work. And hanging out in those effort levels do not necessarily translate into speed. Ergo, I don't really care if you get up there and run you know, an 11 or minute, start at an 11 minute mile and work your way up to a 914, or you hit straight out at a 914 and then have to drop back down to 11 minute mile when your heart rate hits like 180. That sounds terrible. Um, it's not really about how you execute it. It's more about finding, feeling, and holding on to that effort level uh, because on race day, the longer you're out there, the more tired you get. If you think back to Rocky Raccoon, the way you're going to feel is going to shift very tangibly over time. What felt easy and good in hour one, even if you're doing the same thing in hour 12, hour 14, it's going to generate a higher heart rate. Now granted, at hour 14, hour 12, and hour 14, it'll be dark, so the, at least the sun and the humidity components won't, will no longer be, um, you know, playing and interfering. At the same time, like, don't Whatever, what you're doing in a workout like this, when that went like 150 effort is going to feel like 170 effort as you get more tired physically and mentally of being out there running around a one mile loop and getting a little delirious over time. So all that just to say, both are right and both are okay. Um, this isn't about exactity exactness. Um, and you can do either one or both or alternate both that you just recommend. You can get all the way up to like, where, whatever you think that effort band is and hold on to it, where, where you think that pace should be continuously for 30 minutes. You can work your way in and work your way out. I don't really care. What I care about is that you're reaching and holding on to that 10K effort because, you know, frankly, walking is going to feel like that kind of effort uh, past hour six. And if you think back to Rocky Raccoon, um, for pretty much everyone will be like, yeah, that sounds about right. So there you go. Moving right to it. We only got two questions left. So... Coach MK. Oh, and I forgot to loop in Sarah. Oh, I'm using both my screens. Hold on. Mm. She, Sarah, I'm just going to cut through this because we're almost done. I'm really sorry. I did not mean to leave you out. I apologize. Wait, let me see if I can bring you on up here. If I can bring you on up here. Okay. Sarah. Hi. Oh, thank you, Trisha. I appreciate that. Um, allow your viewers to request to join you as a guest in your broadcast. Sarah, can you request in Facebook to join me as a guest in my broadcast and we'll get you in here. Oh, you're here in Facebook. Can you, can you get back in at, can you watch as Sarah and not as fitness protection and I can bring you in? Sorry. I screwed up. Sorry, you guys. Okay, you can try. I'll go ahead and move on to the next question while she does that. Thank you for everyone's here and your continued patience. Um, as we learn whatever it is that we're doing. All right, so... So this is an email from someone on the nice list. Whoops. Is that false? Okay. Uh, this is a little bit of a two-part question. First, I wanted to ask about the strength program you mentioned last week during Ask the Coach. Are you still taking beta testers for that? Yes, I am. Um, it's not an official beta test. It's not a big beta test, and it's not a live beta test. We're playing around with a couple of options um, and at, in formats and trying to figure out what that needs to be going forward, what, what the, where the demand will be and what people like will pay for versus what they will actually do. Um, I don't want to upsell people just for the sake of upselling. Um, I want meaning like, you know, if you add on a, a strength program for $5, even though it's not a whole lot of money, what is $5 worth in a month look to you as an add-on product in certain months? Because I figure very few people are going to want that additional strength year round. Um, so still trying to figure it out. Okay. Um, I fear I don't expect that many people to want strength year round. Some could. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna argue with it. Um, but at the same time, just trying to figure out like what that needs to be and what that needs to look like. So yes, if you want to participate in the beta test for the additional strength, and don't come at me like what is the strength for? 
I don't know. Um, I'm what I am the first round right now. I'm trying to focus with getting the basic products off the ground and the specialty stuff will be coming in 2020. Um, and what I consider a basic product to be, that doesn't mean we care less about it or that it's, Oh, there you are. Um, it does mean that like we care less about that product, that it matters less. It just means it needs to be a little more simple and a little less focused than having like 15 varieties of strength programs. And if you've ever talked to a strength specialist, they're like, well, what do you need to do? And I'm like, you know, do you want to get faster? Do you want to lose weight? Do you want to, and they just start throwing out different goals and it can get overwhelming because a whole lot of us are like, well, yes, yes. And yes. And yes to all of those things, as opposed to, um, really having a targeted program. So that's a long way of saying, yes, it's still open. Um, if you're interested, email me and then, uh, info at coachandlove.com and we will we'll get you, get you going with that as soon as we've kind of figured out not just what it what it is but what we're willing to uh main and maintain every month so okay and maintain by the way speaking of months should be opening for business later this week i'm just waiting for the final stuff from the attorneys and oh gosh let me try that choose your live mode no i don't want to change modes i want to bring sarah on camera Sarah, see if you can request. It says, allow your viewers to request to join you as a guest in your broadcast. See if there's a little button at the bottom of the screen that'll let you request to join me in the Facebook Live. Has to be there, otherwise it wouldn't have let me play with the toggle. Anyway, so, okay, moving on. It's like, don't see any options, request, come on. Okay, we'll play with it later. I'm sorry. Um, this is my bad, you guys, my bad, totally. So I've been trying to get back to my half marathon PR from 2016 and eventually break two hours without success. I am slowly getting fitter, but it seems that as I approach two hours, even at easy effort pace, my legs are cramping and hurting so bad. Do you think I'd be a good candidate for the strength program? If not, how long do you recommend following the monthlies for before the monthly to half plan? So um, when it comes to for to, to kind of unpack the question a little bit um i i hear kind of what you're asking is that you want to up the ante a little bit and you're willing to put more time into it so where should your time go um i am totally fine to let you into the strength beta it sounds like you'd d definitely be a decent can uh, candidate for it when it comes to cramping there are a couple of different factors like traditionally it's always been oh you need more salt or oh you need more hydration and i'm like mm, we know more about cramps now than we ever have and usually that stitch in your side that you would get um when you were running around uh, you know a basketball co basketball court doing suicides or doing you know whatever horribly named exercise they made you do in PE class back in the day um th that side stitch was caused you from overdoing it um that's a, a big red flag from your body to back off what you're doing uh in a really big way and to do it right now so that's you know, what what exactly the trigger um, science is yet to determine, but we know that cramping is more neuromuscular than specifically nutritional uh, now. So where the cramping in your legs could be a really big clue there, not knowing more about the cramps, it's really hard to say. If they're coming from, say, your quads, that's going to be a different signal than if the cramp is coming from your glutes or coming from your hip flexors or coming from your calves. Um, what I tend to see as um, most what I tend to see most frequently when it comes to uh, cramps, um, they're, they're, they're calf cramps and there's sort of like a ripple effect all the way up the leg and or all the way up the calf. And that those tend to happen, uh, not predictably, like it's going to happen to you, but not you and never you. Um, but it, it comes when you're, when you're overreaching, when you're uh, doing something that your body is not quite ready to do yet. Um, let's say you have enough muscle memory to keep doing that thing, but... For whatever, whatever reason, your neuromuscular system, your central nervous system is protecting your body, saying, hey, guess what? We don't need to do this right now. Stop. I said, stop. I mean it. Stop. And that's a, a very, you know, ineloquent uh, description of what can trigger cramps in a major muscle. Um so it's again, it's it's really hard to say. But if they're cramping and they're hurting so bad, um, 
th there might be a little bit more going on than that. So I'm not eager to jump on the phone to talk it out without a little more information. If you could email me with a little more information, then we, we can uh, we can work towards uh, a resolution. But I would hate to put you in something where you feel like I can't keep up and I don't like this. Um, but whatever it is, whatever your goal is, I want to get you there. Um, at the same time, throwing everything at that goal like might not necessarily get us there faster. The whole name of the game is of endurance is to endure and to do this for a really long time. Uh, whether that, and I don't want to burn you out and make this worse or make you frustrated thinking that you need to run through something that is a clear signal to stop. So uh, to your next question, how long do you recommend following the monthlies before jumping on the monthly to half plan? Broadly and generally speaking, I tell everyone, get on the, because the monthlies are a big jump up from the other programs that I used to offer. Um, I mean, not from the supers, obviously, but if you were coming out of, I didn't, if you were coming out of the um, plans and the programs that did not have specific race pace and mileage in them, um, then the intensity in the monthlies could be a bit of a shock to the system. So with that in mind, I would say three months in the monthlies and then moving over to the, the, the monthlies half marathon doc. You could reasonably bang out a really good half marathon every six to eight weeks after you've spent three consecutive months in, um, in, the, monthly, in the monthly plans. So, and the same will be valid for ma, for maintain that once you um, once you're in maintain and you've been there for a couple months, then we only really and three is the magic number three months and then we need ten weeks to ramp for a marathon and we're not locked into this really long like soul sucking cycle of twenty weeks and then putting all this pressure on the day and all this pressure on the outcome. Like if you want to, we can run more marathons than that in a year. I'm not saying you have to. Just saying if that day doesn't go well, we don't need 20 weeks to build back up again. We have more options, and more options should take the pressure off. It shouldn't confuse you. And that is really the greatest gift I can give my kids, I, that that they have options. That like they that Not that I have given them absolutely everything, um, but I have given them enough that they can then turn around and have as many options that they could possibly want to exercise. And that is my, my gift to you guys as well. It's keeping you fit enough year round that you're not, that you are less stressed, you are more engaged and you are more ready to go. And you can't ask for really, I, in my opinion, you can't ask for better than that. But this is a similar format that I've used for a really long time for me. Um, and hi Roz, yay, tell her. Hi, my Princess Moana. Is she dressed like Princess Moana right now, Sarah? Everybody wants to say hi to Princess Moana, uh, a.k.a. Roz, Sarah's daughter. Happy Easter. I hope the Easter Bunny brought you everything, Roz. Um, so, yeah, uh, that is that is what the monthlies and the, the, the promise of the monthlies and the promise to maintain will be one and will be, be the same in that regard going forward. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't say that enough. You're welcome. You've kept me going with your encouraging words, even if they weren't directed at me specifically. I will direct encouraging words at anyone who needs them. You email me at info at coachedinlove.com. Tell me if you need a mantra, I'll make a podcast for you. If you want me to mention you in a stream, I'll do it. Tell me what you need to keep moving forward, and we will figure out a way to get that to you as quickly as possible. She says, happy Easter. Thank you. Thank you, Roz. That's so kind. Um... Okay. You make me believe I can do more than I thought that I could without going into a tailspin over the daily ups and downs that will invariably come. I uh, may not be online during the Twitch stream as we will be um, pretty far from home to, <laughs> to watch a local Colorado thing I'm going to laugh at, um, but I'll watch later. So thank you for writing in. Um, let me know what, how, um, what more I can do uh, to assist and support you. And go ahead and email info at coachandlove.com and we will get you in the strength beta uh, for... Um, well, not for maintain, but it will be an, an upsell add-on package coming later in the year that can be layered on top of maintain. And I've only got one person uh, queued up to do that. Uh, we're not doing it yet because last week kind of sucked and I am behind on getting things into training peaks, but it's happening. It is going to happen. And if you're anyone who's interested, you're more than welcome to get in, but be warned, it's it's a lot. When I took um, when I got the first look at the the plan, um, cause it was made by, by the physical therapist that I usually work with. I took one look and went, whoa, a former me probably would have looked at this and opted right out. Like, nope, that's never going to happen. And that's kind of my fear. So it's a very comprehensive all around program and it's not a huge time suck. It was designed to be like a little five minutes at the end of each run. Um, 
and it's and you're working a little something different every day you're not doing the same thing twice um, which I think is really would be good for say the the rebuild the build and the rebuild programs where you want to attack all the muscle groups that you have either not activated before or have not activated lately um, at the same time for something like maintain I'm kind of like I don't know if people are going to have the same reaction that I did initially which is look at it and go no so we'll see yay um email we will if anyone else is interested let me know and we'll get y'all going because once I get in, into training peaks I'm fine to just be like you you can do it but you've got to talk to me about it you've got to tell me what works and tell me what doesn't and you've got to actually do it because you know you can go get something for free but what you're really doing is like it's, it's it has no value if you don't use it it's no good if you don't do it and it's not helpful to me to be like sure yeah I'd love to be part of the beta and then you don't do the work and we, you don't talk to me about it so um understand that that's that's kind of the implicit deal you're making when you when you come and think about that before you email me because I would love to uh have a whole bunch of people you know testing out the strength for me um at the same time what I don't want is to hand it to like 40 people that are excited to hand it to 40 of their friends thinking they're never gonna ever gonna have to pay for me and then I get no feedback on this which is really what a beta is for so can you talk about what it means when your 140 pace is much slower for example more than three minutes slower than your pace at say 160 to 169 okay the difference there um, you know again there are a whole lot of factors sorry my wobble cushions wobbling a little too much there are a whole lot of fa uh, factors that go into that and the two biggest ones it's really power so the if I wish I had my if I wasn't using my iPad to stream I could show you um, there are two functions in training peaks if you click on any workout um, you'll see options if you're on, on a mobile device if you're using the training peaks app not on the computer but on a mobile device if you click into any individual workout and then um, scroll to the right you'll see like summary um, maps laps peaks if you click on peaks then you're gonna get a whole lot one on top of each other um, little graphs of either like heart rate or peak heart rate over time peak cadence over time peak power over time so those are demonstrations kind of visual representations of something that um, you've heard me say before which is anyone can you know game a mile time trial anyone can train to run one mile really really fast that tells me nothing about what they're trained to do or what they're ready to do in a marathon because that's only one aspect the three aspects of fitness that I care about as a coach and that should interest you as a runner particularly if you're a runner who wants to improve um, because and and I'm in I know the person who wrote this question I know you're not obsessed with improving um, at the same time that you've just asked me about a gap and what it means so when we talk about meaning it's hard to ascribe like what something is without ascribing why it's important um, if that gap does not bother you if it's just if it's just there I'm wondering what that is cool nothing important walk away um, does it mean something not necessarily there are the three aspects of fitness that I'm concerned with is one that power output and so in those little charts in training peaks you'll see like peak heart rate so the highest heart rate you could sustain for five seconds versus two minutes versus 20 minutes versus an hour and it gives you a whole chart and this those are used I use those uh, following key workouts with a lot of my one-on-one -on -one clients in determining what to do in a race so if you're going into if you are you know DJ uh, one of my one of my elites and we're going into a race where he's gonna be racing against other people and he wants to know how much kick do I have those charts tell me like well if you're already here then you've probably got like two minutes to drop that guy and if you haven't dropped that guy in two minutes if he's able to keep up with you you got to back off and preserve yourself that's how those questions are formed or they're they're formed from um, that those peak charts so what those peak charts can mean to you um, you'll see there are big drop-offs and those big drop-offs are a function even though if you don't have like a, a stride meter the stride pod on your shoe then you probably aren't collecting power data but it's a proxy for power so the more uh, the stronger you are the more power you can generate over time um, the more you can call on that as you're as you get tired and your aerobic system starts to fade a little bit then the theory goes the um, you know the the better your performance will be 
Now, when it comes to the three aspects, you've got metabolic fitness, which is how efficiently your muscles work. Um, and an efficient muscle is one that, you know, has been training for a while, has some memory, whatnot. It's, it, there, there's some value to be had there. Um, like basic fitness, we're just trying to increase like metabolic fitness. When we're doing like a Couch to 5K program, we're just getting uh, started in a fitness regime. The second one is that power output, muscular power. And the third thing that we like to train is endurance, that we like to talk about and think about and measure is endurance. To me, with everyone wanting to perform in the marathon, that endurance piece is the most important part. If you aren't good, if you aren't consistent for two hours, you will never be good or consistent for four, for six, for nine. So we really want to kind of dial in what's going on aerobically at those levels while increasing your metabolic fitness. And the biggest lever available to us to pull is the strength lever increasing muscular output. So that's why I'm being introduced. That's why I've been so insistent, stubbornly so, about strength from the beginning, back when it was like, okay, we have loops and BOSU and these four big moves, and you're going to do these super short strength circuits. You're going to be doing something every day, and we're going to rotate. And we're going to hit all the major muscle groups, and it's going to be great. Um, that is, that is, that's what I do and how I think about it and how I've always kind of approached it. And that's why the more work we can do with some of the bigger muscle groups, the better you're going to increase your power output, but you can't afford to totally ignore all the little supporting muscles like the glute meat and the glute men, which we attack with the loops as well, because you still need those to move. Once those big muscle groups fatigue, you really need the little ones to kick in, not take over, but do more. And if they're not well developed, then they can't. So the fastest way to improve everything um, is, or improve me metabolic fitness and muscle power is to work on strength. Uh, unfortunately, there is a lot of diminishing returns there where if you work on strength too much, it eventually starts to impact your endurance, which is why you'll see professional athletes like Stephanie Bruce Rothstein that will really focus on the 5K indoor season and then, or the 10K indoor season and then turn around and get ready for a marathon because all the sharpening and all the power that they need um, to do really do well and kick hard in a, in a 5K, 10K um, goes to the wayside. Um, it decreases while they're working on endurance for the marathon. They never totally stop doing strength, but you have to kind of shift uh, your perspective here. Oh, approve. Ah, there we go. Thank you, Sarah. I just saw that. So, yes, yeah, so those are the three, and these, if so you think of those three pieces, hey, yay. Hey. Doing video now. Yay. yay, thank God, sorry. Doing video now, yay, thank God, sorry. So when you when, so when you yeah, think about those so three, three, I'm sorry. I'm oh. sorry. Talking, keep going. Oh no, it's all good. Okay. No, oh, no, it's all good. Okay. So when I think about those three pieces, so think about those three power pieces. output and endurance fitness, they're kind of like in a triangle, uh, and yeah, they're all fitness, they're kind of like pulling triangle, against each other. So when you when you pull so, um, when you pull the lever to make your endurance better, then your power output's going to decrease. And if you pull to make the uh, and make your your power output better, then your endurance is going to decrease. So if you make your power you like the, the entirety of you better and bigger. Um, like at the same time, the by working on one better, piece and ignoring the other two, um, you're just time, getting better in one direction. You're not improving two, um, on the aggregate. And that's a tough thing to visualize, um, but the hopefully I'm going to have some visual for visual that. Um, Yay. Is that my voice on your that. computer, Sarah? That's so funny. Yay. Is that my voice on your computer, Sarah? That's so no, I, I, my computer is on mute. I'm on my phone. Yeah. That's so Sorry. Funny. That was okay. I it's can't figure out like where the That's feedback so. was coming from. That was okay. I can't figure out like, where the feedback was coming from. Do you want me to try? Do you want me to get off and try again? Guys, we are hearing MK through Sarah's computer. Is what? It, Guys, MK. we are hearing MK through Sarah's computer. Is what? It, oh. Oh well. Sorry. Well, how about oh, well. I just I'll be quiet and let you talk. Okay. I just I've answered all the questions now, Sarah. So. Well, how about I just I'll be quiet and let you talk. I just answered all the questions now, Sarah. Is this better now? Is this better? No. Okay. Sorry. Can you hear me? Can you hear me at all? Yeah. So I I had my computer and my I can only get live on my phone. Um, and apparently, no, the computer needs the mic turned off. I only have my phone now though. Is this, is this better than it was on the computer? 
Is that better, guys? Should I go from my computer? No, it's all that was from my iPad. So I'm 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 doing Facebook Live on my iPad, and then I'm streaming to Twitch through my phone. Um, and I'm not sure why I decided to do that. I wasn't thinking clearly. Um, it's been a long day, you guys. Long day. So anyway, sorry sorry for that. Um, I, there are a couple different ways to co-stream on my computer, and I have not mastered any of them yet. And uh, that is on my to-do list for this for this week. So I'm not holding up the iPad and saying hi with Sarah next to me. Um, you know, kind of like my like my kids would do. We're paid professionals. We need to work this out. <laughs> I'm sure there's an easier way. I just don't. <laughs> with Sarah is not trapped in an iPad. All hell breaks loose. There you go. You need to be trapped in an iPad, Sarah. OMG. Woo. Sorry for that. Sorry for the noise, you guys. Sorry for uh, the sorry for the trouble. But did, if there are any, or if there are any more questions, I'm gonna just turn quickly to the chat stream and see. Uh, oh, hi, Rochelle. Thank you for being here. I'm glad you got to listen in. Um, Sarah needs to not have you on speaker. There's a lot of feedback now. Wah. Wah. I don't know why that happened, you guys. I'll try to figure it out and promise I'll try to do better next week. I can't promise that. We'll uh, we'll. Uh, well, mission will be accomplished, but we're going to try real hard. Yeah, maybe headsets is the next step. I know. I've been putting that off because I don't, I hate that look. Um, and I, I guess I shouldn't care about that aesthetic, but it always feels very strange to me when I'm talking to somebody with headphones on or when I'm watching someone with headphones on. Um, and I guess I'm going to have to get over that because we're streamers and broadcasters now. Yay! <laughs> if anybody else has any other questions, I'm just gone through the, the, the Twitch chat comments and I'm going to go through the comments quickly in the live on Facebook. But other than that, uh, you're coached, you are loved. I'm ready to go win it this week ahead. I don't know about you, but I got to see my runners twice on Saturday and Sunday. Well, yeah, on Saturday and on Sunday. So I feel like I'm winning life right now. It was awesome to see you, Rochelle and everybody else. <laughs> Perfect. Okie dokie. Real quick, MK, I've been so sick. This is the longest break since starting with you forever ago. I will run tomorrow. Should I change maintain plan to all easy runs this week? Yes. If as I mean, if you, I this has been a rough spring. It's been really bad with allergies. So for sure, if you're feeling anything still, all runs can convert to easy effort and all easy effort can be walked. So you really want your body to be using all of your excess energy tor towards healing, towards getting better, towards getting over the sickness and, and moving forward. Um, and, you know, th don't waste that energy trying to train slash improve. What all you really want to do is like heal and move. And however you move is fine. Slower is better. Steady is better. Healthy is better. So make everything an easy effort run. Use your judgment. I mean, I wouldn't be like, you must start at 20 minutes because that kind of if you feel good do it but what I don't want you to do is go out there and feel pressured or stressed and think I should do because remember it's shaming to live in the should so if you're thinking to yourself I should run 30 minutes I would say that's probably the wrong way to be looking at it. It's shaming to live in the should. I wouldn't say that to you, so I don't want you to say that to you. If thirty, if 20 minutes feels good, go for 30. If 30 feels fine and you're like, I'm calling it, great, call it and go home. But you don't need to be out there for longer than 60 minutes, period. And 60 is not better if you know you should have stopped at 20 or 30. So don't worry about it. You do you. Easy, go easy, and I'll always err on the side of conservatism. Better three days off now or three days much slower than we want now than three weeks off three days from now when our body's like, F you, I said rest, and now I'm going to make you do it. So it might be in case Facebook ought to be picked up by your Twitch audio. Oh, you know what? That's totally true. Um, we're going to... 
I'm gonna have I it's, I'm gonna have to go into Discord and start asking questions, I guess, from people who know more than I do and are all probably 14, and that's that's okay. Uh, uh, confidence is confidence, no matter it has nothing to do with age, right? Just a number. All right. So yeah, the new Midwest allergies. I've never really had. Well, I take that back. I had allergies for a while. Um, I started working with a nutritionist, and they mostly went away, and they were gone for a couple of years, and now they're back. And I'm like, what is going on? Oh, everything itches and I'm sneezing and it's so uncomfortable. Ah! Either way. If there's no more questions, happy Easter, everybody. You are coached. You are loved. You are winning at life. Enjoy the rest of the week. Maintain should be open. Fingers crossed by the end of the week. Come on, lawyers. Come on, lawyers. You took all my money. Give me some disclaimers. Once the disclaimers are up, the website maintain itself will be live. Email info at coachandlove.com if the strength beta sounds interesting to you. But don't ask me a ton of questions about it because, like, it is just, it is, it is what it is, and we're still trying to figure that out. It's not geared towards a whole lot of specificity other than more than what you had before. Activating, recruiting, and using all the muscles and getting a little bit stronger in a way that will directly translate into better at, at, um, in a, in a distance event, but there is a whole lot that goes along with that too. So, um, but more strength is more better. That's one thing we know for sure when it comes to distance runners. So there is that. And now I'm going to stop talking. Your coach, your love. Let's go win at life. Happy Saturday. Happy Easter. And I hope the Easter Bunny brought you everything that you wanted. Isn't that how it works?